Uh, my name is Johan Tunnel from Sun Dynamics, and today I would like to show you how to set up um, a CFD simulation using um, our software. It's called um, Case Builder, ISO, ISOF Case Builder, which runs with OpenFOAM in the background. So probably you, you know this framework OpenFOAM, so it's not that easy to set up um, the simulation uh, or the test cases. Yeah, you have to edit a lot of tech files and um, yeah, copy the tutorials and so on. And to overcome this problem for an easy case setup, we provide a tool coming from our software inside CIE. And this is called ISOF Case Builder. So you can simply be started here um, through the terminal. Uh, just open it and here our case builder uh, will pop up. So mainly the program is to set up um, the test cases or the code structure um, for the CFD simulations using OpenFOAM. So, um, and today I would like to present you this software according an example um, or a typical example for the CFD simulation of a flow through device. So therefore I've picked a simply um, an exhaust pipe here. So I already prepared the geometry. So just take a look at this geometry. So I open a terminal, start power view here and uh, have a look uh, how this geometry looks like. So it's simply an exhaust. Uh, an exhaust pipe here coming from the cylinders and probably the question is to know how the flow looks like through this five pipes coming together in one pipe and uh, yeah, what is about the pressure um, pressure drop in each of these pipes so when you see here this is our inlet yeah, you can see here this is our inlet pipe uh, here in the back this is our outlet uh, so we just want to know how this flow goes through um, this device. So therefore, we would like to use CFD simulations and probably do not have ANSYS or any kind of other commercial CFD software in your house, but you would like to use this open source um, CFD software, open form. But um, once I, uh, I mentioned already, this is very hard to set up these cases, even for the simple I would say for this more or less simple um, here exhaust pipe. So therefore, I would like to show you how to use our case builder to set up this case. So let's close this again, or we can start here, go one step up. Uh, here's our folder, it's called geometry, it doesn't matter by the way. So we just make a right click here, open in the terminal, so we are here on the terminal mode. And then we start our software called ISOF Case Builder. So therefore, this window comes up, which is mainly three um, and three parts. So first of all, we have to prepare some general information for the um, CFD setup. So is it compressible, incompressible, and so on. Then we have to define the boundary conditions um, for this case, yeah, so where's our inlet, where's our walls and outlet and so on. And here the execution result, you see which execution commands are, or are set up or are running when we click on then starting the case or running the case. So let's have a look first at the general, uh, at the general uh, case elements here. So we prepared a lot of elements in combination with our modified open form version. So using this setup will provide you the best practice guidelines which we have developed over the years um, within our modified or advanced open form. So we have built in a lot of add-ons to make the simulation more stable, to get more stable schemes, for example, more accurate schemes and so on and so on. So by the way, Let's start now the uh, setup for this case. So when you go through, so we have no body force by this flow through this 
exhaust pipe, we have to select the turbulence models. So here are a number of turbulence models we provide. I just pick here K omega SST since we would like to conduct RAND simulation. So then we're going to numerics. So here are different solvers um, are listed, which are coming with open foam. Yeah, like uh, interfoam as a two-phase um, solver, reacting foam, and so on. We provide some, not all, uh, but we provide, I think, the most used ones here in this case. So what we are doing here in this case, we would like to run simple foam, which is basically the steady state RAND solver. Yeah, so we just click on apply here. Then we're going to have here some post-processing utilities, um, like the catalyst pipe for power view. We have extended forces, field averaging, and so on. Um, I will not go over, or I will not now explain you everything of this. We have no rotation. We have to do some meshing, so we would like to use the meshing. Um, the mesh solver, the meshing in open foam coming with our name snappy hex mesh. So therefore we need a snappy hex mesh box, for example. Um, then a window will pop up, which gives us an idea how this box looks like. So we can go here doing a, uh, a right click and then go fit all. And then this box should appear here. Yeah, so we have here this box with a length the wide and the height of one. Yeah, so we go here again to fit all. When we press the Alt button, we can rotate it here in this case, and when we uh, the Control button, we can zoom. And with the mouse, yeah, you see already this block mesh box, for example. So we need the Snappy Hex Mesh configuration file. Um, so just click here on this uh, button, so you will add this here also at this. Uh, selected case elements, just zoom it to the right way here now to see something more. I will go here a little bit higher. Um, so that's all for the meshing to select this case elements. We have here the material properties, yeah, so the uh, for the cavitation folder, for the compressible single phase um, tra thermal transport properties, for example, perfect gas. So what we are using here is a single phase transport properties for the steady state rents. Yeah. <clears throat> so let's have a look at the each case element. So when you click on here uh, on the simple form numerics, you can see here a number of um, yeah, parameters which um, yeah, control the simulations. Um, for example, we have here the start time and the end time. Um, we have here the number of processors which you can edit. We have internal field we can set, purge byte which gives us only the last 10 time steps, and so on. So everything I think this is explained also in the open form tutorials. And, um, so I will not go uh, too much into detail here uh, with this one. So what we have to do um, for Meshing, we have to define a block mesh box which controls our or which um, surrounds our device. So therefore, um, I would like to first add the snappy hex mesh configuration file. So here, this is more or less a little bit tricky. So we have to add here some features. So here is an entry called features. Yeah. So we can here add new entries. So we have a um, uh, the pipes, we have the inlet and the outlet, so we have three uh, features here in this case, so we have to add three geometry parts, so I will go uh, a little bit bigger here, so so the first one will be uh, our pipes, so we have to select our geometry as an STL file here, this should be pipe STL, um, the maximum refinement level, not make it too big, the mesh, should be three here in my case. Um, we have a number of layers of two. Um, this is probably a little bit less, but just to save time for the meshing or for in this demonstration video. So we have to give here then a name. So I would choose simply as pipe as the name of the boundary conditions um, for this. So we have here also a scaling 
um, the translation of the ST files, maybe you have this one only meter and you need to say millimeter and so on, so you can simply translate or scale this geometry. So then go further, let's go to file name for the inlet, so if you select the inlet STL with a refinement level also of maximum of three, and we have the number of layers of zero, so it makes some sense at the inlet, and the name will be also as the STL file called inlet. So in the last one, we have to add our outlet uh, STL, so we applied it here. So we have here a maximum refinement level also of three, so we have no layers, just like zero, and we have a name called outlet. So I think that's all for our uh, snappy hex mesh. Um, configuration. Of course, you can you edit some quality controls. So we have now relax. So we have uh, standard. Um, you may play with this um, to find your best mess settings. But nevertheless, it's much more easy when you edit our uh, this elements through our GUI than <coughs> configuring um, the snappy hex mesh configuration in the tech file. Yeah. So um, first of all, that's all for this one. Uh, so what we can see now is if we add this STL files here, so we can see here also in this uh, now in this part. So just click on block mesh box and then back to Snappy X mesh configuration and you will see here our components which are, which appear here. So I just unmark here the block mesh box and you can see here our exhaust uh, exhaust system, now our exhaust pipes here with the outlet and here with the inlet geometry. So now we have to make sure that our box is only a little bit bigger than our exhaust pipes here, so we have to modi modify our block mesh box. So therefore, I would say this is going to be only the half of this. Uh, just make it maybe the height maybe 0.4 uh, so yeah it's still still inside there so we have to shift a little bit later on so the length I would say this is uh, take a look at 0.5 probably uh, and our so yeah we have I think this is okay it's still in there yeah so and we have our with here in the y direction, uh, maybe this is not that high, so maybe you said only 0.3. So, and then I think we have to shift it in the z direction a little bit. So our p0, which is the lower left corner, uh, so we can go to a little bit minus, so minus 0.05, for example. And now this is uh, here inside. So you can also click on here. Uh, to see this is, is a wireframe, yeah, and so you can see more or less um, this, this is going to be included here. So this one. So this makes this again shaded, uh, and here this one we can go to. Sorry, this for wireframe. So we can see okay, this is still our pipe is still inside this box. Uh, which ensures now the uh, meshing process. Then for the snappy hex mesh configuration, we have to define a point uh, inside the mesh. So this is, should be defined here. Yeah, so just the PIM. So we add a new one. There is a point in mesh. So we have to define this point in mesh already. So when you take a look here uh, at this geometry, um, uh, you have to now put the point into one of the exhaust pipes. So what I'm going to do is here click on Geometry Inlet yeah, on the right side and then show the properties. Yeah. So what we can see here now is the properties uh, on the uh, on the uh, inlet or we can see here the properties, for example, on the outlet. Yeah, so I will just I will go with the outlets. This is only one one phase here. Yeah, so 
just go go like this. So what you can see, I will once we click on this pipes you know, to see something more. Um, so you can see in the uh, length in y direction, so in the length in x direction, z direction. So the, from this you can find here um, probably our point and mesh. So let's take a look at the x direction here. Uh, so this is uh, 0.03. Uh, let's see, magnitude of the length, so it's coming from nearly 0.2 to 0.237. So what I'm going to do is here, so for the x-direction, I will go with 0.21, nearly in the middle. Yeah. So let's add here um, another point in right direction. So the right direction is going to be inside, so this has to be shifted in the positive way. So 0 0.05, for example, or even 0.25. And in the z-direction, you can see here the direction coming from 0 0.36 to 0.274. So just in the middle, so let's have a look at 0 0.25. So then you see here uh, yeah, this coming. Uh, our point and mesh. So it should be located here inside uh, um, inside the domain. So you still cannot see it, so it's probably a good sign that it's inside our pipe, inside our geometry. You can also use Paraview or even if you know your domain to put uh, here the point and mesh, the point inside the domain where you would like to mesh. So I think that is all for the first time to set it up. Yeah, so we defined all the parameters like turbulence modeling, um, turbulence model, the simple form numerics. I keep it simple, it's serial, one processor here. We have now our block mesh box which surrounds our device. We have configured our snappy hex mesh with the point and mesh and all the three geometries here and we defined have to define our single phase transport properties so this means our kinematic viscosity um, since I assume that we have air inside so I will go with uh, oh the viscosity for air just click on apply so that's all yeah so to start with this one um, everything is now defined. What we can do now uh, is there are two steps. So we can click on here create case and skip the boundary uh, setup during this case because we not have generated now our inlet patch or our outlet patch or the geometries in the mesh so we are not able to set it up now. Yeah? So therefore the first step will be so for creating the case that we skip the boundary setup doing our case creation. Yeah, um, this one, this button create case uh, and set up the boundaries also will only write this case to the uh, to your disk. So where you can uh, edit this uh, and so on. So it will not run now the meshing process or will not run the solving process so far. Yeah. Um, then in our start button, we have also different entries here. Yeah, so we can do execute everything without any cleaning. We can. This is when you have everything defined, like the boundary conditions, the mesh uh, settings, and so on. We can clean and execute everything once you change something. For example, you would like to clean your case and uh, run it again. Um, we have to begin with the mesh setup for example, and we have to begin with the case setup. So this will write the case to your disk and run uh, with the mesh tab. So since we are not know where our, uh, or since we not have generated our inlet and uh, outlet geometries in the mesh, we will go with the mesh step here in this case. So we just click on uh, begin with the mesh tab. Yeah. We can save this configuration, this parameter set yeah, let's take it at case.iscb. This is our file ending inside case builder parameter file. So just save it here.
press OK and to create this selected configuration in this directory. OK. Uh, so then you can see here uh, yeah, the log file. You can use auto scroll. And now you can see, once you used to do, uh, you work with open form, you can see this is the meshing process um, from this case. So now I think the boundaries would like to or the server would like to write the boundaries, but uh, we have not defined this so far, but nevertheless, you can see here, okay, our meshing has finished here. Uh, as the refinement level is really about nearly 10,000 cells. So this is not that much, I would say, but to check it, we can here click on start power view in this case to take a look how our mesh looks like. Yeah, so therefore, Let's have a look here, uh, only at the internal mesh. So, and you can see, okay, this is, I think this is a little bit too coarse for, um, or other words formulated, this is way too coarse. So we need to refine um, our mesh a little bit. So therefore, uh, we need to enhance our um, meshing from our, uh, block mesh stick from our box around this device. Yeah, so then we're going back to block mesh box. So you can see in the resolution um, of the meshing of this block, this means 10 cells uh, in the cubital direction. Yeah, so the number of the cells along, along the longest side. Yeah. So I would say we go to 20 with this. We can click on case here so everything now will be cleaned everything um, is now ready for the second mesh step we're going to mesh it again and check it again uh, you can see here this meshing appears again so now we have um, running the snappy hex mesh in the background uh, so and hopefully we get now a a better mesh or more comfortable mesh. I will not go with the million or uh, number of million cells uh, in this demonstration, but nevertheless, let's have a look. If we enhance our resolution up to 20 cells in the cubic direction, so then everything now the layers uh, are built in, are built up, and uh, hopefully it's now taking not too much time now. Okay, that's all. I think this is going to be finished. You can click on Start Power View again. Uh, let's have a look at our mesh. So this is a little bit, I would say, a little bit better here in this case. Yeah. So it's not that good, uh, but for all the demonstration, this is okay. Yeah. So now we are fine with our mesh. Now we have to set up the boundary conditions um, for this case. So our boundary conditions, we have here a, a new entry next to the general um, parameters. So here we have the available boundary conditions, which we have uh, implemented here in our case builder. So like the cyclic GGI, empty boundary conditions for the 2D case, and so on and so on. So if you would like now to add the boundary conditions, um, we have to pass a boundary file um, from our meshing, our previous meshing. So let's have a look. So then we can see, okay, we have the inlet, the outlet, and the pipe um, patches. So for the inlet, I would say we take a look at the, um, the mass flow boundary conditions. So we can add this here. Uh, we can assign it here. And then you can see here the field um, where are different parameters which we have to set. Yeah, so the mass flow value should be maybe a, a one, um, 0.1 cubic meters per second. Um, I think this is okay. The density should be air, yeah, it should be one. And then we have here um, our turbulence parameters like the intensity. Um, uh, so the fluctuations will be here 0.00, that means uh, uh, this is 5% of the mean velocity of the fluctuating parts. And the length, I would say, is a little bit smaller. It's 0.1. So you have to set the characteristic length scale also for your case. Anyway. 
So that's all. We go to outlet. This would be a simple pressure outlet boundary condition yeah, where we have to define um, yeah, the pressure at the outlet. So this will be um, the field tilt that will be uniform steady. Um, be careful, this is named here as a vector. You have to set it up as zero as a scalar since pressure is a scalar value um, to zero and we have here our own density equal to two one. So that's all and for the pipe um, we can add here our wall boundary conditions. So I would say that's all for the boundary conditions. We have defined an inlet and outlet and uh, the walls. Maybe you can save it again uh, uh, in these files. And then we have everything ready. So we have done already the mesh, uh, the mesh creation. So what we need to start now is, so we need to say, begin with the case setup. So this one uses the existing mesh, uh, which we have generated and start with the case setup. Okay, then let's run it again. Then you can see everything uh, is written now on your disk, like uh, all the configurations files are written and the simulation is uh, running in an automatic way. Yeah. So now you can see here the RANS solver is doing his job. Yeah, you can see here this um, output parameters um, in the solving process. Yeah, And uh, to check it up, or at least you can now save this doc file. Maybe you need this later on. Or for additional post-processing, you can save it here um, as a log file. So since the uh, um, first time step, which is written to hard disk, is uh, um, at the iteration step uh, 100, you can set it up here in this. And you go here to uh, this. Uh, case builder settings and simple form numerics, you can set it up. So you can see now it's as small as two, over 100. And then you can click on start power view to check your results. Yeah. So I just click on apply. Yeah. Go here to the last time step. And then we have here our exhaust pipe running the CFD analysis. So you can see here, see the pressure distribution um, after 100 iterations. Yeah, so this looks, I think, not that optimized, uh, although um, this is not yet uh, converged, this solution. So be careful with this. We can go here now and refresh to check if there are next time steps already written. Uh, so now we are here coming back. We are at 188 um, to check it out. By the way, now you can see, okay, the residuals are, you know, very less than so we make sure okay this we somehow converge now so go to the last time step again so we are here now at uh, after 200 iterations yeah so now you can start start uh, to take a look here at the velocity fields at the pressure fields for example so what you can do is for example filters extract block block oh just wait, we have to include all mesh regions here. Just click on apply. Then we go to alphabetical extract block and we can use the inlet patches here. Uh, so we have here the inlet and you, what you can see here is uh, the distribution of the pressure at the inlet. And you can see here, this is not that equal, I would say. Yeah, so here the inner three pipes are more or less at about uh, over 7,400 pascals, and here it's only 6,700 pascals. Yeah, so it's not, um, there is a difference in the pressure which we need to um, optimize yeah, in this case. So also when we have here our part, maybe we can do here this post-processing extract block. We can take a look at the outer pipes just make it a little bit more transparent here in this case. And then we can add some streamlines, for example. Take a look at the power you set up here uh, to build it up. Uh, I just put here now our circle, make the radius a little bit smaller. 
then click on apply yeah. and you will see okay this is here our streamlines coming here together yeah. and now you can start uh, analyzing your case cases or optimizing your geometry so what you can see here now we get a very quick setup of an open form case when you use it as a standard open form if you have downloaded it and compiled it on your Linux machine you need to copy all the tutorials from the snappy hex mesh you need to copy the settings from the simple form tutorials put them together I did a lot of tech files um, setting up the boundary conditions and so on so everything is now done with our software this case builder where you can easily set up this uh, CFD simulations so I will just close it here uh, in this case, um, you can see here the solver is still running. So, uh, but nevertheless, I would like to kill this now. Um, and then to show you here now the folder, yeah, you can see here this folder. This is here uh, coming from you know, this is standard <coughs> open form format. So, you have a zero folder, a constant folder, and the system folder. And you can see here everything is written through our case builder so you don't need to edit one of the tech files and so on what is interesting here you get now here um, uh, the case builder file um, or the run file where everything is included here. yeah so um, this is a very nice feature I would say um, that here in this files oh, in this files also the geometry is included be careful when you have large STL files but nevertheless now you can send this files to one of your colleagues for example who has also this um, case builder program um, from us and you can simply run it from scratch without any importing of other STLs or make sure this the STLs are there and so on so everything is included here in this um, run file yeah, we have also the shell script here. Um, how this is called, uh, or which programs are used um, through our, um, our program case builder. You may take a look at it um, to simply run it uh, inside the terminal without um, the GUI. So once you have finished this, now you can play around. Yeah, so setting up other cases here, yeah, you can go back. Um, edit here the block mesh stick configuration maybe to 40 to increase your mesh size you can play around with the uh, mass flow boundary conditions maybe you need to set up set it up as a, a bunch of mass flow rates yeah so um, then you can simply add here for example a new directory uh, just make a new directory here uh, create a new case, rerun your case, and to set it up. Um, yeah, I think that's all uh, for this one, uh, how to use this case builder. Um, if you have any comments or thoughts, uh, please send us an email uh, to info at Dynamics or give us a phone call for this phone number. Thank you and bye.